and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today on this Monday. And today's video is gonna be sort of a rant. Uh, I've been checking out a lot of different people doing videos about the uh, Olympics. Uh, as always, I'm always checking out angry old hoops videos, uh, some sports and fitness rants videos, and uh, angry old hoops in particular. You know, like always, he's breaking down uh, some of these plays in the Olympics. And I must tell you that it is severely disappointing to see that the United States lack of fundamental uh, fundamentals is being accepted across the country now. I guess this is just <laughs> this is just what we're doing. Uh, you know, one thing I can think of in particular is, you know, uh, Anthony Edwards took about seven steps, you know, on this so-called play that had great footwork. Set seven steps, great footwork. <laughs> but anyway, in the midst of all this, you know, I've been trying to watch games as I can, or at least catch pieces of the games. And, you know, one thing, one of many things that is truly annoying to me is these players need to self-celebrate after they do some mediocre play. I mean, I don't care if the play was great. You know, uh, this need to self-celebrate and... You know, it just got me thinking. So there's this clip going around on Facebook, and it's of the Dream Team. And I can't remember who they were playing, and I can't even rem remember who threw the outlet pass. It might have been Carl Malone. Uh, it might have been David Robinson. But anyway, an uh, outlet pass, fast break to Magic Johnson. And uh, Magic Johnson does like a no-look alley-oop behind his head to Michael Jordan who, of course, finishes the play uh, with one of those uh, beautiful sideways dunks that he does that's kind of signature to him because I really don't see anybody else. I hadn't seen anybody else dunk like that before or since uh, in the way that he does it. And uh, after that play, Magic Johnson's pumping his fist. Uh, you know, Michael Jordan goes over and gives them a high five. And it got me thinking, between the difference of how players used to celebrate and how players celebrate today. Fanboys, this is gonna go over your head. So go ahead and click off, you know, before you start complaining. That, you know, you, you're not gonna get this. <laughs> like you don't get many things in life, it's okay. Um, but it got me thinking about the difference between uh, what celebrations used to be and what they are today. Today's modern NBA player is a celebration of, you know, of self. It's, it's a selfishness that's different from, you know, in order to be great, of course, there has to be a certain amount of selfishness. Um, because, you know, again, you're, you're going to have to spend a lot of time working on your game. You're going to have to spend a lot of time uh, away from those that you love, you know, tunnel vision about this thing that you're trying to accomplish. So that's one kind of selfishness that you have to have to be great. But the difference is, if players back then, they were selfish in a way because they had to learn the game, because they were, you know, trying to become the best version of a basketball player they could be. But they weren't selfish about the game of basketball. And what I mean by that is they truly loved the game of basketball. Uh, one example off the top of my head that I can give you is uh, the so-called king, the deer at the ESPYs. Uh, one of the things he said at the ESPY Awards is um, he said something to the effect of, you know, people should be thankful about what he's done for the game of basketball. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. It, it was something to that effect about what he's done for the game of basketball. And when I recall Michael Jordan talking about basketball, 
uh, it's always been about what the game has done for him. You know, I, I'm pretty sure during this Hall of Fame speech, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. It's, it's been a while since I saw it. But I think he referred to basketball as being a refuge for him. And so, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, being the face of that league at the time, you know, uh, talked about what the game of basketball has done for him. That is because he loved the game of basketball. He truly loved it. And so did the players of that era. You know, so did the players, I would say, all the way up through the early 2000s. And, you know, when we hit the 2010s, that's when we really began to see the loss of love for the game. Again, once once Kobe Bryant was the last... Uh, player of that, you know, of that type. And so, you know, um, yeah, so players back then had a love for the game. And so the self celebra- the celebration back then, it wasn't celebration of self. It was celebration of the game of basketball. It was celebration of of making a great play within this game that they love. Again, fanboys, I know this is going to go right over your head. You're not going to understand it. But, uh, you know, if for those of you who follow my channel, you you know that, you know, probably know that I'm a musician. And so, you know, just comparing it to music, you know, if... And I'm not talking about just being, you know... um, a singer or something but if you're an instrumentalist and you're on stage performing with other musicians you know that the rush that you get from performing with other musicians is not because of what you do it's not this self aggrandizing oh wow i'm i'm so great look what i did for the music no it's like look what we did together to make this this music as great as it can be and so this is the same as What the players back then, when they celebrated, it was celebrating, uh, it was celebrating the game of basketball. It was celebrating the creativity and, you know, the, the love of the game. What is possible within the game of basketball. So when Magic and, and the, um, what am I trying to say? And the, uh, improvisation that can take place within the game of basketball. Once you get so great at what you do, you know, that ability to make stuff happen uh, in the moment, on the fly, this is what these players were celebrating back then. This is why they celebrated. So when Magic got that uh, that pass, that outlet pass, again, I can't remember who it was. Might have been Carl Malone, David Robinson. And, you know, and his instincts kicked in. Magic being the greatest floor general to ever play the game. You know, the greatest passer to ever play the game. And his instincts kicked in to to just know Michael Jordan's coming down the court. And to just, you know, like I said, flip it over his head with both hands backwards up towards the rim. And know that Michael Jordan was going to catch that ball and, and make something happen. You know. That is what they were celebrating, is that 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 magic that can happen when you're playing the game of basketball. You know, that magic that can happen when a bunch of players who are so great at what they do get on the court together and, you know, uh, and yeah, and basically making magic on the court. That's what they were celebrating. And that's why they celebrated back then. Again, they were celebrating the love of playing the game. So when an extraordinary play happened, it it wasn't about them themselves getting the attention for the play. It wasn't about calling attention to yourself. You know, Magic didn't turn around and and beat his chest and and stare at the audience. <laughs> you know, he pumped his fist and was looking at Michael Jordan like, "Yes, we 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 did something. You know, we we made a moment in this game." And, and so, but these players today, again, they have to celebrate every single little thing they do on the court. This is why, <laughs> this is why nobody even has the, the focus to, uh, 
to build something, to accomplish a long-term goal in the game of basketball because everybody's so concentrated on the short term. Uh, when you look at these players, uh, again, like LeBron James, this is your perfect example because he does it every single game. He does something that he needs to beat his chest about, raise the roof or whatever. And, and here's the difference. When LeBron James does it, when Steph Curry does it, when Anthony Edwards does it, you can tell that in this moment, they are actually not thinking about the game of basketball for just that moment because they, they are trying to be recognized for having done something that they think was great. Whereas back then when they celebrated, uh, when they could, when uh, Magic and Jordan hit that extraordinary play together, even though Magic pumped his fist and Michael Jordan was coming over to high five him, uh, you could tell both of them were still very aware of what was happening on the court. Like, it, they, they weren't taking a moment to celebrate and, you know, the other team is going to be able to get a fast break off of them or something. You, you could tell that they were both still very aware of what was happening on the court in the moment. And, uh, and this is the other, yeah, that's the other difference. Like I said, players today, when they take the time out to celebrate, you can tell for just a moment, <laughs> they might as well be somewhere else besides the basketball court. You know, they are, they are celebrating because they want that recognition. You know, they want to beat their chest because they think they just did something great. And it's completely ridiculous. And again, like I said, because it's, it's not about the love of the game. It's about the praise. This is the, this is the era that LeBron James has ushered in. It is about the praise. You know, and LeBron James, more than anybody, uh, the, the people who follow this channel, we all know that everything LeBron does is about the praise. Uh, him breaking records, to me, him staying, still being in the NBA right now, is about the praise. It's like, why are you playing, LeBron? <laughs> I, I would like to know why you're still playing basketball at this point, you know, but it's about the praise, you know, him getting Bronny uh, to play with him on the Lakers. It's about the praise. And LeBron being the face of the league, he ushered in this era of seeking praise and all of these players do it. Um, again, when you talk about players like uh, uh, Larry Bird, here's something, you know, for those Larry Bird fans, here's how his back injury, and I, I thought I was, again, uh, the last few weeks or a couple of, a week or two ago, something like that, I have been watching documentaries on Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. You know, I watched one that it was ac actually about both of them together, and then I watched a couple that was about them separately. But here's something interesting I found about Larry Bird. So when Larry Bird uh, got signed to Boston when he was drafted to Boston. Uh, people said that you could drive past Larry's house and see him mowing his lawn. <laughs> you could drive past his house and see him mowing his lawn. So despite making enough money to hire somebody to do it, Larry Bird would still go out and mow his own lawn. Now, here's something else. Is he actually hurt his back I can't remember what year it was, but the beginning of his severe back injury was because he was uh, uh, paving a driveway for his mother. Again, instead of paying somebody to do it, you know, Larry Bird didn't get all this money and become this entitled brat like, like all these players today. Like he wasn't above still doing work himself, you know? <laughs> so. Uh, to me, things like that just show you the mindset of players back then and players now. Again, players now are all about the praise. They're all about living this celebrity lifestyle and, you know, uh, not down to earth in any kind of way. Don't care about the fans. And again, like I said, you know, players like Michael Jordan, who has the love of the game uh, clause in his contract saying that you cannot stop me from playing basketball. You know, go, in and go back and watch the videos, go back and watch The Last Dance, but there are other videos about Michael Jordan that talk about the injury he got in his second year. And he was literally fighting with management 
to be able to play. He's literally fighting with management to be able to play. And they're trying to tell him, hey, you know, if you in, it, it's not all the way healed and if you risk injury again, it could be much worse. It could even possibly uh, be a career ending injury, possibly. And uh, but he wasn't having it. <laughs> you know, he was like, you know, I want to be on the court. I don't I don't care what the risk is. I feel good. I, I want to be on the court. I want to make the playoffs. I don't want to take the season so we can get a better draft pick. Uh, Cause we all know LeBron would have been completely on board at that point uh, if he hadn't played the whole season. And they were like, "Hey, LeBron, why, why, why don't you just sit out? Let let's take the whole season and we can get a better draft pick." Oh, LeBron, LeBron just had to vacation. He was like, "Oh, okay, I I, I think that's a great idea." <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'm I'm so happy that. Management suggested that I just sit out the rest of the year and, and that way we can get get me some help next year You know, we, we can get the number one draft pick and uh, you know, hopefully we win a championship immediately You know, otherwise, you know, I might try to have them trade it or you know, I'll request a trade myself But yeah, it's a great idea for management for me to sit out the rest of the season. So these players <laughs> These players today are doing everything they can to play as little as as possible and again to me all these things go back to the love of the game again you know the mainstream media uh, people can try every way they want it to justify uh, the attitudes and the way these modern players conduct themselves but the, at the end of the day they just do not love the game the same way that players used to do. And I'm I'm not saying they never had a love for the game because I feel like definitely probably when they were all younger and coming up, they had that love for the game. But I feel like at the point where they got that contract, you know, I feel like in the NBA, what used to be the goal was, what used to be the ultimate goal was to be a winner, was to be a champion. And now I feel like the ultimate goal is actually just making it to the NBA. And once these players make it to the NBA and get that big check, they feel like they've made it already. They feel like they're as good as they should be, you know, as good as they're going to get. They must be great because they are getting all this money and they don't have that incentive to actually go out and try to build a dynasty. You know, to, to actually go out and and work hard, hard on their game every single day. And they're more than willing to accept all of these things that so-called the management is putting on them, like load management. And again, I'm going to say this again. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. You know, for those of you who think, uh, oh, well, you know, it's, they're... It's the management. The, the management are just protecting their investment. Like I said, these players will fight for everything else except to be able to play. <laughs> Again, you take somebody like James Harden, you know, who wanted a, a trade out of what? Houston. And then so he comes in out of shape, not really playing to force management hands. So, so these players know how to get what they want. So if they actually wanted to play, they would play. But the fact of the matter is, is they are looking for every excuse not to play. And you cannot justify it. You can't say, well, that's just the times we living in. Yes, it is the times we're living in. However, just because it's the time we're living in uh, doesn't give you a pass for it. I mean, that's like saying, uh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> Ro robbery is accepted today. It, it, it's accepted today. Just because robbery may be accepted today still doesn't make it right. It still don't mean you get a pass for it. You rob somebody, you you going to suffer the consequences one way or another. So just because you say, you know, these are the times we're living in today, that doesn't justify it. That doesn't make it okay. But anyway, <laughs> we going to hold up here. Like I said, you know, I just needed to... Uh, kind of vent about this you know it, it's just sickening I'm tired of seeing these players uh, celebrating every little thing they do every little thing they do when they're, they're not even putting in giving maximum effort you know when, when Steve Kerr had to say that hey you know these they just not give a maximum effort you know when they had the close games 
I guess before the official Olympics started, you know, they, they just weren't giving maximum effort. Again, and they, you know, uh, a disregard for the fans and, and many other things that we all know. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What do you think is behind all this self-celebration? Do you think it's harmless? Do you think, hey, they're just, you know, celebrating the fact that they made a great play? Or do you think it's more to it than that? Do you think it shows that they these players are simply in it for the praise? That these players, uh, first, uh, is also a sign of insecurity. And that these players simply just don't love the game. They love what the game does for them instead of, uh, instead of trying to do something to further the game of basketball. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. All right.